love chess and uh, I think I might uh, play it even more now because now I don't have to have an opponent I can play against the computer on the real chess board right Arthur hi yes now you can play against the computer on a real chess board and the chess board is called square off and you're the inventor of this table right yes and uh, how does it work so all you have to do is, just like a classical chess board you have to make your move the computer is going to think by itself and make movements like uh, is going to respond by physical movements on the board and you can also use this for uh, connecting online and playing with any friend of yours across the globe i see how does it actually move uh, the pieces so we have a setup of a sensing surface at the top which senses the user's input and there, there's a complex arrangement of magnets and motors beneath which take care of moving the computer's pieces on the board and uh, uh, what's the computer inside that makes all the decision so a part of the computer is there on the board which takes care of the movement on the board so that it doesn't bump across any other piece. And the second half is there on the mobile app that we're running which does the processing in real time and offers uh, various connectivity options. And the phone is connected with the board via Bluetooth and uh, the processor decides what's the next counter move gonna be. I see. And what chess engine are you using? We are using Stockfish on this which is uh, an open source engine and it's most rated uh, chess engine online. I see. So it will be pretty hard for me to beat your chessboard. Um, not exactly. So if you are at a grandmaster level person, then yes. Otherwise, it's got various, uh, various difficulty levels, which you can choose if you're a novice player or if you're a beginner, intermediate and things like that. So uh, kids love this because they get an experience of playing at their level, and which is amazing. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. If you're watching this, You've probably owned a Texas instrument calculator and you've probably had some spare time doing, during some of your uh, high school classes where you instead uh, tried to play games and stuff like that. Well, I'm standing here with Christopher and he has taken this hacking of a Texas instruments calculator to a whole new level. Christopher, tell me what you've done. So we are Chemitech. We all learned programming on our own graphing calculators back in the day in high school, as you said. And we're showing off that you can teach programming and electronics with graphing calculators. So uh, we have, we're showing off a bunch of demos here where we've taken graphing calculators and we put games and programs on them. We are showing off various uh, educational programs as well as games that our members on Chemitech have written. And we're also showing that you can connect them to Arduinos, you can network calculators together, and many other things that you can do with calculators as a programming and electronics platform. I see. And uh, what is the uh, most awesome thing you've done with a calculator? I managed to get some of our calculators connected to the internet so you could load a web browser on the calculator and load up web pages, as well as connect to internet relay chat so you could chat with people across the world directly from your calculator. But uh, <laughs> how does a website look on a tiny, tiny low resolution screen? Very, very simple, like you would look on a computer from the 1980s, which these calculators essentially are. I see. Thanks a lot, Christopher. What better way to start off the fair than talking to the man who invented all of this, uh, the, the, the make fair and the make concept? Uh, because uh, make is not just uh, the maker fair, it's uh, much larger than that, right? Yeah. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, the maker fair is kind of a catalyst for what's become a movement, the yeah. maker movement. And, and a lot of people who are doing different things, 
uh, because they love doing it. Really. Yeah. But can you tell me how it all started? You started with magazines, right? I started with Make Magazine, and you know the idea was just to encourage people to understand how to create projects that yeah. were fun and interesting to them. Uh, and I thought by sharing the instructions, we all learn how to do that. And then eventually we become more uh, familiar with how to do something we want to do ourselves. Yeah. And uh, then you started with uh, these fairs about, was it seven or eight years ago? Eleven years Eleven ago. Eleven years yeah, this, ago. This uh, World Maker Fair is in its seventh year. Okay. But our first fair was in, in San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, 11 years ago. I see. And it's expanded now, so now it's all over the world. Yes. Uh, earlier this year, uh, there was a Mina Maker Fair in Stockholm at Tekniska Museet that uh, uh, me and my colleague Frederick also went to. Uh, and when you look uh, out on the world uh, and see all these kinds of uh, fairs, all, all the fairs all over the world, what do you think? Well, you, you've accomplished something huge. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't often get to think that way. Uh, you know, um, I feel like there's so much work to do here to yeah. keep this going, and and uh, but I, I am very uh, uh, happy to see that this means something, not just here in America, but in all these different countries and cultures out there, and that it's kind of crossed those boundaries into different languages, and and uh, um, people are making it you know adapting it to their purposes in these different areas. Yeah, uh, but. One of the problems that we have in Sweden is that not all people realize that they can make stuff. Yes. How do you think uh, we should um, uh, make more people interested in the whole maker community? Yeah, well, it's a challenge, and this is what I'm trying to address by... Um, I think these events have a great impact, yeah. and it's kind of hard to measure. And sometimes, you know, I, I say, you know, I'm trying to get companies to support them and people to, to show up, and... <laughs> I think we get a lot of people like that, yeah. that never thought about this. But they go to the Learn to Solder tent and they sit down and they do something and they go, ah, look, I did <laughs> it, right? Um, because our cultures also tell people not to make things, it, right? Uh, uh, how do you mean? It tells they us not to They tell make us you're not good at that. You have to be an engineer to do that. Yeah. Or you have to be trained to do that. Uh, and, and, that and I think the real difference is you can learn on your own to do this, and you can find other people who are learning to do this, and you can do it. Uh, in the talk, you said that uh, the schools are not always uh, uh, the Receptive. best. Receptive. <laughs> yeah, and they're not uh, pushing everyone who can right. make stuff into making stuff, right. because uh, it has to fit in the curriculum, and right, right, uh, it's right. always by, done by textbook and stuff like that. Right. Uh, so what can yeah. we, uh, as uh, the huge maker community, yeah. do to make the schools realize that there's more ways to learn? Yeah. Well, um, I, my focus has been on community. Yeah. Schools are part of that community, but they're not the only ways we learn, and they're not the only teachers and not the only learners. So we, what Maker Fair does is help us identify that there are a lot of people in our community that are uh, learning, uh, learning our electronics, for instance, and they're learning in non-traditional ways. They might be learning on uh, using YouTube. They might be learning by talking to a friend. So. Um, I think you have to promote as many of these alternatives as possible and not just say, hey, the school needs to change. How do we kind of identify what's already going on in our community so that more people can find those alternatives? And then I think things start to come into schools. Yeah. The example we've had is that teachers start to bring this in because they see the power of it. They mm. see what it does for kids and engages them and, and makes them uh, better learners. Yeah. Absolutely. And well, it's not that they're all going to be electronics geeks. No, of right? course not. But, but uh, it's <laughs> understanding really how the world around them works. They all use phones and they all use things, but to get some understanding of how those are made is important. Yeah. So the maker uh, community, it's, uh, it's very broad. There's a lot of things. And I think that we are going to realize that even more after we've been around this fair. Is there yes. something we shouldn't miss out on? Well, I would say that's not that. You know, like just this morning I saw a person playing saxophone that sh shot fire into the air, right? And I saw a, 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 a woman playing the violin on a motorized skateboard <laughs> as she was going along. So I don't know where they come from. It just You just discover these great mashups of, of, of things out there, and they're, they're, I, they make me really happy to see yeah. them. Okay? okay, let's see what we find. Dale, thanks Thank you a lot. Very much. Thank right, you. Take care.
Okay. 